Hey everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp, and I'm so excited about their exclusive holiday flip cards set with art impressions. These create the most adorable interactive flip cards, perfect for the holidays. I'm going to be sharing with you from start to finish the creation of the snowman card. However, I also created a penguin card. You're getting both the snowmen and the penguins in this holiday flip cards set. Both cards were created exactly the same, just different images and different sentiments. So here is what you're getting. This is the holiday flip card set. And it's adorable, as I mentioned, snowmen and penguins. And then there is the awesome die. So what we need to do first, I'm gonna be coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So I'm going to trim some Bristol Smooth cardstock to six and a half by five and a half inches. This is the card base. So six and a half inches by five and a half inches. That six and a half side, that's going to be the long side where the flip happens. The five and a half is your standard A2 length. So now that we have our cardstock base trimmed to six and a half by five and a half inches, we're ready to take that flip die and we want to tape that in place right at the three and one fourth inch measurement on the long side, the six and a half inch side of our card base panel. I am using the grid on my glass mat to guide that. I'm also going to tape down my background panel here with a little post-it tape so it's not shifting. It's really important when you're taking the die cut flip die and to get that measuring exactly at three and a fourth on the left and the right. You might even want to use two pieces of washi tape or post-it tape to hold that down in place. I used one, but I think that on my second one, I used two, just one on each side. I don't want that shifting. Then I'm just going to kind of tape that down once I've got the measurement exact. It's kind of hanging off each end there. Now those little tabs at the end, those actually score. They do not cut. Up at the top, that little top little shape, that cuts. And I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to get our die cutting machine. We're going to die cut this. And I did this for both background panels. This is the most important part of the whole design is making sure you get this lined up. And I promise after you've done it once, it's a piece of cake. It's actually super, super easy. And I think you guys are really going to love the results. You can use this. Art Impressions actually has lots of these flip style stamps and they're just addictive and really cute and fun. So now we have our panel. And I'm just double checking. I'm making sure I have equal distance on both sides. I kind of did a lot of double checking before actually grabbing my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine and running that through. So now we have our card base. Let's go ahead and just peel up our post-it tape. When you bend that in half, look at what you get. You have an A2 sized card and it is going to flip open just like that. Easy peasy. Um, so stinking adorable. So now we have our card base. We want to stamp anything that's on the front of the card. I started with the front. You could start with the inside. Completely up to you. We're going to start with the front and I'm going to completely do the front of the card before moving on to the inside. For instance, I am using the front facing snowman. And I am doing a lot of prep work. I get a lot of questions about how I plan things out and all of that. So I kept that into the video because I really felt like it was important. Now there's some awesome sentiments in the holiday flip card set. However, I visually wanted a little bit more up above my image than what I was provided with those sentiments just for how I'm designing my card today. Because of that, I actually opted to grab a couple of Simon Says Stamp sentiment stamp sets, and I'm going to be mixing and matching those 
for my sentiments on my cards. So I'm not using the sentiments that come in the holiday flip set. I think this is a great way to show how you can mix and match your new product with something you might already have on hand. What do I mean about filling in that space? Instead of one line of text, I actually wanted text that sits like one on top of another. I'm going to use sentiments from the Holiday Greetings Mix One stamp set. And we're going to be using the Wishing You A phrase, the Merry and Bright phrase, and the Christmas word to build Wishing You a Merry and Bright Christmas on the front of our card. That's only on the front. And you can see how that just kind of fills in that upper space a little more. That's going to be a lot more evident when I add in some snowflakes and inking into my card design. I also don't want a white background. So we're going to be doing some masking today, which is a fantastic way to create a one layer scene. I am stamping the snowman first with the ink on three fade out no line coloring ink. Then I've stamped the image on some Simon Says Stamp masking paper to cut that out and I'm placing it right over the snowman on my card. Along the bottom edge of my card, I want it to appear to be snowy and I want it to be white. In order to do this, I die cut some more masking paper with a Drifting Stitches border die. Now, this is important to note, this it die has stitching. When you ink, those stitching lines will pick up the ink. You're going to end up with inked stitching lines along the edge. I personally like that and that, that was what I was going for with this card. If you don't want that and you want it to remain pure white, I would pick another border die that doesn't have stitching in it. Now that I've masked off the bottom edge of the card and my snowman, I am ready to ink up the entire front of the design. Now you might notice the masking paper hangs off the edge of my panel. This is great because it's going to secure the panel to my mat so it's not shifting all over the place and the back of my card isn't picking up extra ink. If you're worried about your panel, your card moving, I would secure part of it with some sort of repositionable tape like washi or post-it tape so it's not moving around while you're inking up that background. I'm using blending brushes and then the Hero Hues Splash and Blue Hawaii inks to create my blue snowy background, concentrating the darker blue Hawaii color down near the landscape, the snowy edge of my card, and the blue or the splash rather up near the top. We're going to spritz the background then with water from a distress sprayer and completely blot that dry right away and then hit it with a heat tool. I do not want the water to have a chance to seep through the masking paper. This is one of those instances where I would really recommend heating it with a heat tool immediately and not allowing it to air dry. Now that we have our background distressed and dry, we can add stamped and embossed sentiments and stamped and embossed snowflakes. This is very much background building first before going in and coloring in our focal point images. So those sentiments we talked about a little bit ago from the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Greetings Mix One stamp set are going to be laid out up at the top of the card in the way we want them to go. And I, I'm so sorry, I had to get up over my sentiments to make sure they were lined. Got my head in the way. We're gonna stamp those up first and emboss. This is another reason we need the background to be completely dry. We have not removed the masks yet because we're going to be adding snowflakes and we don't want those to be stamped over our images. Now we have heat embossed our wishing you a merry and bright Christmas that looks amazing and we're ready to add snowflakes. There are four snowflake designs in the Holiday Greetings Mix One stamp set. You could use snowflakes from anything. Because I'm already using this stamp set, it's already out, I opted to go ahead and use it and use the snowflakes from it for my card. We're going to stamp and emboss these all over the background. I think that there are seven on the front of my card 
and then maybe five on the inside, which I'll show you when we get to the building the inside scene of the card. I'm using my Misty to get really good stamped impressions. We've stamped our first batch of snowflakes. We'll sprinkle on the white embossing powder, heat and emboss those, and then move on to the rest. I want to clean off those stamps so that they don't have any embossing ink on them when I move them. That way I can move them around easily. So we'll just place this back in our Misty, clean them up, stamp the rest of them, and there is the front of our card. Now the magic, the magic of coloring them in. The reason I opted for the Bristol Smooth cardstock as my base, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is I'm coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and they just color beautifully on the Bristol Smooth cardstock. I am going to kind of color one by one with these snowmen, starting with the left and just moving right. And you're gonna see these cuties come to life. I have sped through um, the coloring, but I did leave it all in. That includes the front panel and the inside panel. I did not videotape the penguins, and that is simply to save time since this is a very long video today. I really wanted you to see the creation of the, the flip design to inspire you to create your own and I wanted to share the coloring. It's very similar. I used a few different colors for the penguins. I am showing that card in the video. I'm just not showing the process, the coloring process. But you can find information on all of the marker colors used and the combinations over on my coordinating blog post, which is linked underneath the video here for easy reference. So if you are wondering, um, what colors of pink did you use for the scarf? Those will be linked. There's going to be a list that has penguin one, penguin two, penguin three, penguin four, and all the colors used to color them in. So hopefully that will help you if you're looking for some fun color combinations. I kept very traditional with my snowman. So this first little guy's got the traditional top hat. Um, that's gray, dark gray and light gray. His band around the top of the hat's light green and yellow green. Then the holly berries are deep red and red, and the leaves are green and light green. So we're using three colors of green in two different color combinations. The darker green color combination is green and light green. The more limey green is light green and yellow green. Red all throughout my card is deep red and red. Now this was something new for me, which is kind of funny because I've had these colors for years now, for a long time. Um, I generally do not opt to use deep red and red together, and I don't know why. It's definitely gonna give you the more Christmassy red. I think I tend to go maybe a little too pink. This is your true red color, which is totally what I was going for. That goes for any accents, the berries, scarves, hats, bows, coats, and even the candy cane peppermint sticks that they're holding, which I love that they're these, they all have these little candy cane sticks. I think they're just darling. And those are all deep red, red, and then light gray, or the, yeah, light gray and a blender for the white. So they still have a touch of color. Once I have finished with my first guy, I'm going to move on to the next one. The snowman bases themselves are haze blue and blender. That's just to give the snowman a touch of color, but not really add tons of color to them. They all are going to have pink haze for the cheeks and orange and bright yellow for their noses. Eyes and mouths are the one thing that I go back in with black pens of some sort, whether it be a fine tip black pen for drawing in closed eyes or mouths, or the Sakura gel pen for dotting eyes. They are all going to have their faces 
you know, definitely embellished with black because I want them to stand out. And you can also take black pins and add detail to buttons or white pins, whatever you want to do there. There's lots of options, but definitely be really aware of their faces because their faces are what make them so stinking cute. It is really fun to color in their outfits, but you want their little faces to take center stage. I ended up loving this little Santa hat and then the vest this guy's wearing. I want to mention real quick, one of my favorite things to do is add embellishment to images I've colored. And I feel because these are water-based markers, you are going to get better results if you give your image a few minutes. So I came back to the first snowman and I'm taking my deep red marker and drawing in stripes on the scarf because it's had a few minutes to dry while I worked on the second snowman. And then I went ahead and took my dark gray and I added pinstripes to his vest. Look at what a huge difference those small little touches make, just adding some personalization to the image. Anything left white, so let's say the brim of the Santa hat and the pom-pom on top, that is light gray. I will go in and add some little detail with the tip of my marker to the pom-pom to give it some texture. You don't have to, but it's a fun little way to just kind of add in a little bit more, and I'm always for adding more. And then we just want to kind of, we're finishing the peppermint stick he's holding. His peppermint stick's going to have a teeny tiny little green stripe to it, and I Forgot to do that, I was kind of doing every other, and you'll notice in the finished card examples, I didn't do that for my last snowman on this card, I did it later on, and nor did I do it for the inside of the card. I forgot until after I had photographed him, and then as I went back I realized that I had forgotten, and I definitely wanted them to have those little cute uh, peppermint strips, sticks, pardon me, that have a little green stripe to them. It's just a fun little touch. You definitely don't have to. So we've moved on to our third snowman now. He's going to have a red coat and then a lime green and dark green hat, scarf, and a light green mitten. We're just moving kind of back and forth amongst the two green shades, red, and then there's obviously the little gray vest and the gray, black hat, top hat. So his coat is red. We're just gonna trace that out with deep red, blend out with the red color, and then we're gonna go back and do the glove. I will mention, I wish that I had done the scarf, mitten, and hat first. Red needs to almost always be the last color you do unless you're super careful. And I did try to be really careful and I think it worked out fine. But if you don't want to worry so much about red bleeding because you touch the tip of your green marker to something you've colored in red and it picks it up. Um, I like to color anything else first and then go back and do red usually. This was one of those things where it's trial and error and you're trying to figure out, you know, you don't want two red, you don't want a red vest and a red coat right next to each other. And I kind of forgot as I was coloring and I went ahead and did the coat and I was like, darn. But it's definitely manageable, but I do recommend try to do the red part last if it's touching another lighter color. So just draw in this last snowman's face really quick. And this guy is going to have a red and green sweater. It'll have a red trim, dark green, and then a lime green scarf and a lime green and red hat. And we're going to do a little crosshatch design on his scarf and his hat. Now, keep in mind, whatever you've done on the front, when you go to the inside of your card and you stamp the back sides of your snowman, you want them to match. So I just kind of flipped back and forth referencing that throughout the coloring process. And I'll show you more of that when we get to designing the inside of the card. We almost have this guy all colored in. We almost have the front of our card all finished. 
bright, colorful, so cute. The images from Art Impressions are darling. So very fun in that, but then you add that flip element to the card and it really just takes them up a notch. Little red pom-pom on his hat, red brim. Again, I colored the red first, I don't know why. Lime green for the hat, and then we'll just go and do a little lime green scarf and a lime green glove. And that first snowman does have some little eyes I forgot to color in, and I will go back and add that in with a fine tip black pen. Little cross hatch design, just back and forth with the tip of our light green marker. Let's take our card, open it up, and let's take the back sides of our snowman and stamp those along the bottom edge. So the inside part of the sentiment is going to stamp on the flap, the back side of the flap. In this case, we're going to be stamping in Happy New Year also from the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Greetings Mix One stamp set. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and stamp our snowmen. We're gonna create a mask for them just like we did before. For this design, I feel it's important. We want the seam to be mimic the front of the card. It's just the back sides of these. However, I didn't really want to have blue all over the flap part, so I'm gonna do some creative masking. We're gonna reuse our border, our drifting stitches mask, that drifting stitches border. We're gonna reuse that along the bottom edge. I'm going to mask off the top part of, top inside part of the card along the seam. We're gonna mask off that little tab, open it back up, and then take our blending brush and take the Hero Hue Splash and Blue Hawaii ink colors and we're going to ink up the inside part panel part of the card just like we did on the front. Spritz this with water from a distress sprayer, blot it dry, heat it with a heat tool to speed that drying process so that water doesn't have a chance to seep underneath our masks and potentially ruin our snowmen. And once we have that we want to add some snowflakes. Just like the front of the card, we a few little snowflakes here and there, just is gonna balance and round out the design really well. So we'll take those same snowflakes from the Holiday Greetings Mix One set and stamp and emboss those on this panel. This is, all of these steps are the exact same between the two cards. As mentioned, the only difference between the penguins and the snowmen are the colors used to color in the images. On the penguins, I did more rainbow for their accessories, and I used different sentiments. I used the inside Christmas greetings for the penguin card. That is also a Simon Says Stamp exclusive stamp set. We'll finish our little snowflakes here, and then we will stamp our inside sentiment and get to coloring in the back sides of all of our cute little guys to finish up our card. And I've left the masks in place because they are masking off anything that I don't want to have stamped with a snowflake. They protected areas I didn't want inked and then they're going to protect areas that we don't want snowflakes. We'll go ahead and remove those masks. Look how cute. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp our inside sentiment. And I am a big fan of, there's not a lot of black. We don't have black outlines here with the art images and things. So I didn't really wanna go with black for my inside sentiment. And I instead used the Hero Hues Blue Hawaii ink to stamp and happy new year on that tab. Now with so much going on on the front of the card and then on the inside of the card, we've got all these scenes. I stamped and Happy New Year up near the top of that flap because underneath is gonna give you some room to write, you know, a tiny little message. And for example, I could put Happy New Year, hope your holiday's been great, love Nicole, um, something like that. So just really 
leaves you a little space to handwrite a message. You could definitely handwrite it up above if you wanted to, but I was thinking more, trying to keep the scene as clean as possible, but still provide a place to write your name, to sign your name on that card. Here is where I'm referencing the front of the card, and I probably referenced it more uh, than necessary, but I was super conscious of not wanting to mess up. I wanted to make sure I used the exact same colors in the exact same um, you know, order and everything as the front of the card. So we're just kind of working backwards. We're starting with the snowman in the sweater because I like to use, because I'm right-handed, I like to go left to right, keep my hand out of the ink, eliminates maybe the smearing that could happen because I, I tend to lay my hand down. And then we're going to move on to the snowman in the red coat, the snowman in the vest, and finally our snowman in the top hat. Same exact steps as before. If there is crosshatch on the front of the card uh, for the scarf and for the hat, we want to do that on the inside. If there is pinstripes on the vest, we want to do that on the inside. Just try to be as consistent as possible so that it looks like a seamless scene. You'll notice that my masks maybe aren't, weren't perfect, perfect, and that's totally fine. The Ink on 3 ink is very forgiving. It's light. It fades. So you can kind of color a little outside the lines if you need to. I tried to go outside the lines a bit with pom-poms on hats and whatnot to just kind of extend that and give it a little bit more of that, you know, pom-pom type of effect at the top of their hats. So much fun. Make sure and leave that little space on their heads as necessary. Uh, that's actually the back of their head that's snow and not a hat or a scarf. One of the reasons I worked one snowman at a time instead of maybe one color at a time. One, I didn't want to get my hand in it and smear as I mentioned. And two, it was a lot easier to just kind of work small area by small area on one snowman, making sure I colored everything correctly. And I did the same thing with the penguins. It was a lot easier to just work one penguin at a time. For me, I, I found it easiest to just work one at a time and then, you know, do the same thing on the inside one at a time. We've got our little guy with his vest. And then we'll have our little guy with the coat in the top hat. So I will be really curious to know how you guys feel about these flip cards. I hope you leave a comment down below. Tell me if you like them, if you want to see more of these. I really, I enjoyed this so much. I'm looking at getting some more Art Impressions stamps. And if you want to see some more samples, please let me know. Let me know what you want to see more of in the comments. If you want to simplify these even more, you don't have to do some of the extra steps. So for example, Maybe you want a little bit more bold outline to color. Stamp it with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and color in with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I did forget to mention, part of the reason I choose these is unlike alcohol ink markers, these are not going to bleed through to the inside of the card and ruin the inside of the card as far as bleed through. So that's, I would definitely opt to, if you're doing single layer cards like this, Pick colored pencils, pick water-based markers that aren't going to bleed through. That's number one. Um, then I would really make sure that if you want to simplify, black outline, color them in. 
Maybe you still want to ink. You can create a mask. A mask with a black outline, in my opinion, is a little bit easier. So go ahead and mask that off. You could do some simple inking. You don't have to stamp and emboss. You could stamp uh, sentiments with black ink or another ink color that's going to show up. You don't have to do the extra embossing step. Or you can leave off your inking altogether. Another thing you could do with water-based markers is you wouldn't necessarily have to mask if you use a light enough ink. You can kind of just go around it and then the water-based products, whether it be like Distress Ink and Zigs or something similar, they are going to work together. On the snowmen that are white, I didn't want that there to be dark blue on those, but you can definitely kind of get by without masking if you want to. So just a couple of additional ideas. Here's a look at my finished cards and how they flip open. Look how cute! I hope you guys has, have loved these as much as I've loved creating them, and I hope they inspire you to try a flip card soon. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these exclusive holiday flip cards featuring the Simon Says Stamp and Art Impressions exclusive set, only available through Simon Says Stamp. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says Stamps and Dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new paper crafting or card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.